What's going on guys and welcome back. I'm still up here at Southside Intelligence and Service and this is a sled that has been lurking in the background of a lot of videos and not a ton of you have actually kind of saw it or picked up on it but some of you did. You picked up on the sled, you picked up on the engine on the on the bench in the back but we haven't talked about it yet. So last year as you guys, if you guys have been here for a while, you know that we built a or we put a 9R uh, straight from Polaris so we put it in a short track. It was a 23 uh, 136 XCR last year, uh, and it was a blast. I mean, it was like one of the most fun sleds that I've ever had or ridden, and same with Bruce. And it was so good that we decided to do another one this year and kind of step it up a little bit. So we have an XC9R again being built here at Southside Sales and Service. Uh, this will be kind of Bruce's baby. I get to use it um, or fight with Bruce to use it when I'm up riding with him. Um, or if my salt never comes in, I'll just steal it from him and he may never see it again. But uh, nonetheless, we are starting with a another clean slate. This is a brand new 2024 XCR 136. This year is with the 135 Cobra. Last year at a 16, uh, just kind of worked out with the way sleds came last year and X, Y, and Z. It doesn't really matter, but uh, we had a 16. This year we're doing a 135. Uh, 136 again. We feel like that's kind of where a lot of people are going, the direction. Uh, not a ton of 128s, you know, obviously Bruce sees the number. So um, we wanted to kind of build something that a lot of people want to see. And I feel like the 136 was a little bit more popular than the 128. We did not see it come from Polaris this year. Uh, a lot of people thought we were going to see a 9R and an XCR this year um, come actually from Polaris. And we did not see it again. So again, we are here to build the ultimate kind of trail monster, just like we did last year, but kind of step it up a little bit. So... Bruce is going to go into the details of kind of what our plans are. This is just an overview of what we're doing. Um, there's going to be a ton of uh, step-by-steps here. We'll do like an engine, a whole engine video, a uh, whole suspension video. But this is just kind of what we're doing to it. So you guys are kind of filled in um, and can come back and watch more. Yeah. Yeah, guys. Uh, yeah, so I'm really excited. Like, I want it to snow as soon tomorrow. as this is done. Yeah. <laughs> it won't be done tomorrow, but as soon as it's done. Uh, I had a lot of fun last year. I mean, anybody that rode it in, in the crew that we ride with, Jesse, obviously, and uh, everybody loved the sled. So we're, we are we're doing it again this year. Um, you know, from front to back, we're going to do, and top to bottom. You know, we'll, obviously, we'll do the shock valving, the springs, you know, similar to a cross country, get things for that, uh, you know, aggressive ride. Uh, the other thing that we are doing is the long spring that we brought up, uh, the long-tailed torsion spring that we brought up that is on a cross country we uh we definitely are going to try that and this is the sled we're going to try it on so this is the normal spring which obviously is the stock one still because this sled has not been apart at all the only thing it's got different on it right now is a nice 139 design look at the flake cap. in that thing yeah it is i can't it's, wait to get it in the sun yeah it's gonna look killer it, it laid down really good and big shout out to chris he's been with us for Many, many moons. Yeah, he raced for me back in like oh five, six, seven, eight, and um, started this, started doing the decals back then, just with a little tiny cutter, and just making little decals for things we were doing. And now he is full blown, you know, do everything, and it is, you know, it is super quality stuff. You know, yeah. everything just line, everything lines up real nice. You know, all the tank stuff, and like he said, it just lays right on there. I mean, like it is, you know, it should i say sticks like glue <laughs> so uh so on the, the spring uh deal here we had it on the bench and we kind of showed you the difference in length but the new hole we're going to be doing is like way out here that's how much difference in length this spring will be coming across and being in front of the front torque arm pivot uh, on the rail and uh, race department says it does make a huge difference and i believe everything they tell me because everything that Ben and Tom and Scott have been doing is is worked. It's working. Yeah. So yeah. So we'll go. You know, Bruce will go through this thing front to back. We'll pull all the shocks out, revalve them, put what we think is kind of the best, most nasty setup for that. Yep. Including those rear springs. Uh, we'll probably go to 125s up front. Oh yeah. Definitely, Definitely go to 125s up front. Mm -hmm. Pull the strap. I mean, this is going to be like the ultimate. If you guys called and said, "I want the baddest," that's what we're putting in this thing yep yeah we're definitely going to spend the time and do that and and those springs you know that's going to be new to us and um you know to just dial that rear valving for trail use and those springs do come in two different 
load spring loads and they're both a low preload spring which is really good for the trail um, but one of them i think might be a, definitely a little bit too stiff for me so i'm going to go to the what they call the lighter one but even the lighter one is 16 pounds per degree and what we've been dealing with mostly with an hd is 13 pounds per degree right the big difference is going to be is the less preload so it'll be real good anti-bottoming and then not ricochet so bad because of the the less preload <laughs> So, uh, you know, it's, um, I'm looking forward to it, and they did. They said it made a huge difference going through the bumps and how it comes out of the bump and how flat the sled stays. Right. So, so suspension-wise, it'll, it'll get a full tune-up from uh, the one and only Bruce here at Southside. It's going to get some CNA skis as we always run. We'll be running XPTs on this. Yeah. If we get a lot of snow, I'm going to put XCSs on it. So, <laughs> but again, that will be when and that happens, and I hope it does. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, most of the time, XPTs, it'll be getting studded, woody studs, as always. Uh, they're a big supporter of Bruce and myself here at the channel, and uh, we wouldn't build a sled without nope. some woody studs. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Rocks hand guards, um, gauntlets if he needs it, Rocks risers will be coming. Yeah. And the big thing that everyone, I'm sure, wants to hear about is what's sitting up there. Brief interruption here to give a shout out to Max Performance Parts. They jumped on board to support the channel this year and gave us some fuel jugs, oil catch cans, they do tire ramps, carburetor covers, uh, a lot of your plastic needs. Uh, great product, awesome guys to work with. I uh, just wanted to give a big shout out to them for jumping on board this year. Ryder approves even though I'm holding one of her toys. Uh, JJB will save you some doll hairs off the uh, at your checkout. Uh, and right now they're running a sale. So if you order in the next couple of days, it'll actually be combined. It'll be like about 18% off. So get on over to maxperformanceparts.com and get your orders in now. And last year we did a full uh, Polaris 9R. That was a long block from Polaris. Yep. And we dropped it right in. But of course you can't do the same thing twice. You can't. You no, never can. Just can't do it. You cannot do it. No. So Bruce got with a couple guys over at Indy Specialties, and Bruce is going to kind of tell us what we have sitting here on this bench. Okay, so we, um, we talked to Devin out there at Indy Specialties, and we, I bought a, a few things from him over the year, them over the years, and um, many people have, and it is all very good quality stuff, no matter what kind of, you know, from bushings to engines. So this here is a long rod billet crank. So it's their own crankshaft that they it's a billet so it's you know it's as far as the accuracy of how it's made and and the balancing of it is much better um, a long rod you can get it in a standard length rod or you can get it in a long rod i did it with the long rod and and this is the cylinder spacer here so that's how much difference there is you know stack height to bring it up and the idea behind that is is the when the piston fires what angle the rod is at and and the piston when it fires and comes back down so the idea of that is the it's better for the piston piston life yeah piston life and, and just more uh, everything just flowing a little bit better um the other thing that they do is the bearing that's on this end if anybody's seen uh any videos on it or whatever is the the pto bearing is a huge bearing on this 650 850 motor which this is the base of that uh is the bearing is literally slid right on to the crankshaft. So the crankshaft is the inner race, and it is a really big bearing. Um, and in 19, we had an issue with that where the bearing floated a little bit when they assembled, and we had a little bit of an issue with that. And that was taken care of right away by Polaris in 19. And then put a clip around it. So then when they dropped it in, okay, now Didn't that move. centers it, and it don't move, but it still was designed the same. What Indy does is they press that bearing on and it has a ring and the idea behind that is they feel that with the clutch on the end of this and obviously the clutch is you know going through its travel coming back going through its travel coming back and when it comes back it snaps back so it's almost like a like a hammer when it comes back like a slide hammer. slide hammer so they feel that with you know it can also it can pull on the end of that crankshaft and and that's where the the rod journal is so it can try to move that off the rod journal so their their fix to that is to press that bearing on and then put a ring on it so that was one other upgrade that they did so so yeah he um he did the whole deal put it together for me uh used any specialty head which the the way the head is made and and inside how they have the uh, the fluid or the coolant going through the head is supposed to be to keep the motor cooler because it doesn't have hot spots. It doesn't have a, a thin area where there's less coolant cool. 
and then more coolant in other areas, it's more even all the way around. So I definitely said, yeah, let's do that. So we'll, um, we'll definitely talk about this more and as when we're putting it in and, and going through and obviously when we're riding it and talking about performance, but uh, it is the, the same injectors, same reeds, same um, throttle bodies. That's not changed. It's just this stack height and stock internals. Yeah, stock 900 pistons. Yeah. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. The other thing I did is um, we did a, a Cerakote on the pipe, which is we take the tin off of the pipe, which is the, the coating that goes over and it has like insulation in between it so that it holds the heat in the pipe because that's the idea that you want. Well, this, the Cerakote does that without having to put that shrouding on it. And one, besides them doing a few different colors and it looks really cool, is that it does definitely work. Um, years ago, I did this on, on, a, on a 600 build that I did. And one, the, it, it changes the sound. sound yeah. yeah, the sound, it doesn't make the, any louder because it's obviously not exhaust sound. It's just two stroke sound. So you kind of hear that in the pipe now and it, it does sound really good. And especially with a motor that's going to be responsive like this, yeah. it really sounds good. Right, so you took a, a true 9R pipe. Yep. Took the coating off, or took the casing off, yep. sent it out, got it coated. Got it coated. And this is what we got now. Yeah. So now we're going to have a blue blue bullet, yep. two blue bullets underneath the hood of this thing. Yep. But, uh, <clears throat> so that is really the plan for this thing. It's going to be fun. It was fun last year. It's going to be fun again this year. It should be more fun this year. Yeah. Uh, very excited to see what that engine does and, and what that coating does on the pipe and really how we could get this thing suspension-wise set up, which... I mean, we know what direction we're going. You know, we're just testing a few new things, but right. it should be a ball. I mean, this thing is like, last year's sled, I should say, was it was like a, and again, I came from a snowcross background. That's how I know Bruce. And like, you know, the, the race sleds are very zingy, very snappy, like right there. And that's what this thing felt like, but on steroids, because you had twice the power, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. Um, so tons of fun in the trails. I mean, it's just like instant corner to corner stuff. It's just out of this world. So. Very, very excited to see what this one does. Um, you know, this is just one of the builds that we're doing this year. We have my sled. We have a couple other things that we have up our sleeve. But uh, that's it, guys. We have a, another XC9R in the build. Uh, this one's going to be just a little bit more wild than the last one. And uh, But that's going to do it. Bruce, you pumped? I am. <laughs> Bruce gets like giddy about this build he really does he's like the, he's like a little kid in a candy store he just gets wound I up walk, about I walk it. by it all day long <laughs> just staring at it just want to work on it but yeah. I work on all the other stuff yeah so, so but we are getting close to really tearing into this thing um hopefully my sled does come in here soon and i gotta come back up here anyway and probably start tearing into this thing but that is gonna do it guys uh are you guys excited for this build because we are so put it down in the comments let us know how excited you are but uh make sure to like make sure to subscribe and we'll see you guys